Well, not a good day. Uh, didn't have a lot of focus, not a lot of intensity out there, and uh, it's a little disappointing to come off of a Monday being off. And uh, we had a lot of mental errors. I think we've hit a wall with our installs, uh, maybe overload the players a little too much, I'm not sure. Real sloppy. Sloppy on defense, a lot of busts, a lot of bad snaps, and mishandled snaps on offense. I'll be honest with you, it's probably what I expected to happen uh, Saturday as opposed to today. So uh, it's not where we need to be. Didn't uh, throw and catch the ball real well and gave up a lot of big plays on, on defense, which is never good. So we got to do a better job as coaches to help these kids and not overload them with the install. So um, did some good things in special teams. And I think the punt team's improving and uh, getting a lot of reps on protection. So that's been a key thing for us. And we're kind of starting to implement our field goal PAT block teams and getting that taught, although we did not kick any field goals yet, which will be interesting when we do as well. So open it up for questions. Is Bryce still your main guy out there at punt? Yeah, I agree. Oh, at punting? Yeah. Yeah, he's been in. Uh, he's been punting. I be honest with you, Chip. I hadn't seen it all the way through. When we watched the tape, he's been the best punter, but he hasn't always been with the ones. So uh, I initially thought you were talking about quarterback. He did take some reps today with the ones at quarterback. So we're rolling those guys around and doing some things there. But sometimes during punt, he's not the first one over there because he's coming from a different spot. So we're really focusing on the protection part and trying to get as many reps as we can. But I mean, if we had to punt today, he would be. On Bryce, a lot of people focus on Grayson as last year's starter. Jacob is the, the, the new guy. Right. What about Bryce? Where does he fit into this mix? I tell you, I've, I've really been pleasantly surprised with Bryce. You know, we do a lot of drills where everybody's everywhere we watch him. Um, I called him, and I talked to him today. I said, Bryce, before practice, I said, I think you're too casual. I think that you um, relax a little too much. I need you to be more assertive, take more of a leadership role. Show me that it means something to you. To you, show me that you want it, and uh, he's he's been trying to do a better job of that. You know, I don't have a baseline comparison because I really hadn't seen him before um, at, at leadership role. So I think he's got to improve that. But he did roll in there some um, with the ones and make some throws. I wouldn't want to speculate who did better today because I got to watch the tape because you know about 50% of the time I'm watching the defense and I don't know who made the throw. But uh, we, we, we thought enough of what he's been doing. And that was kind of the plan originally when Jim and I sat down, was to make sure that before the first scrimmage, they both went with the ones and they both went with the twos and they both kind of got some reps in there. So they both done that. So has it been Grayson primarily with the ones, Bryce <coughs> now getting some reps, Jacob still mostly with the threes? That's correct. And that's the way it's been most of the time. Now I'll say this, guys, because of the way we practice our structure, we can't get reps perfectly saying this guy's ones, twos. I mean, Jacob's throwing them with the one receivers. They all roll in there. So but with, when it comes to O-line and team periods, it's been uh, those two guys rolling in with the ones and the twos. Coach, what have you seen from Lorenzo Carter so far in spring camp? You know, a lot of people told me that Lorenzo maybe wasn't physically tough enough and sticking his face in there. And everybody talked about the, you know, the sophomore slump, that kind of thing. So we've tried to really challenge him to be more physical. And we've had two days in pads, and for two days he's done that. You know, Coach Tucker's given out a, kind of an award a day of who, who gets the most ball disruptions and who attacks the ball the most. And he, he won that uh, award from Saturday's practice. So he, he had it in the meeting today. And uh, he, he's done a good job, really giving extra effort. So I've been pleased with that. You know, I, I don't, we haven't tackled live. We haven't done anything super physical yet. We're still kind of feeling our way out with that. but. I've been pleased with where he, what he's done so far, but he's one of those guys that I think you got to push and challenge all the time because he'll relax on you. Mm -hmm. Running back. Who else has stood out to you? Anywhere? We were saying. Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. Well, I've been pleased with some of the young mm -hmm. linemen. You know, we didn't have a great day today. Okay, we got ran through, so I don't want to give anybody too much credit. But Michael Barnett has come along, done some good things to Quan Hawkins. I've really been impressed with him. He plays hard. You know, John John Atkins, he, he plays hard and physical in there. Those guys have been pleasant surprises inside and have really worked hard in there to do a good job. Justin Young, the guy we moved up today and gave a chance and gave some reps. So a lot of those kids I knew through recruiting, but I hadn't seen them until the last four practices. So I've probably been most pleasantly surprised with those guys. Rock's really pushing them and they're doing a good job. Another guy, Reggie Carter, 
um, has been I've been pleased with Reggie. You know, he doesn't seem to have um, any instability in the shoulder or any. Uh, he's not holding back. You know, he's not playing tentative for a guy that, that went through that shoulder surgery. I think he's six months post-op now. So we, we took the black jersey off of him today, and he seemed good to go with it. So I'm pleased with him. One position that you guys had talked about maybe needing some help at was running back. Uh, a guy a lot of people don't feel like they know a lot about is Tate Crowder. Sure. Can you talk to us about what you've seen out of him? Yeah, Tate's a kid that's got good size. I mean, he played high school receiver. I remember him coming to camp in Alabama. I think he's a ninth grader, so wide receiver. And he kind of outgrew that position. And um, he's improving. He's not uh, a, a naturally instinctive runner right now. And I think the more he gets to carry the ball, the better he gets at it. And uh, he's a guy that's got to show some more toughness. He's got to run it up in there and stick it in there to help us. Because we certainly you know, have a depth problem there. What are you seeing out of that Gatorade or something? Water, I think. All right. Coach, what you seen out of probably in, even though today was not a good day for that side of the ball, your most experienced group in secondary? You know, they've got a great attitude. <laughs> they go out there to work every day. When you watch the individual groups and you just sit back and watch and you like track how many yards they're running, how much ground they cover, those guys work hard. And I'm really impressed with that part of it. Now, our communication skills aren't there. And Dom and Quincy, they, they know the defense, and we've kept 80% of it the same. So you feel like you wouldn't have the, some of the bus we've had. We've had a little bit of a lack of communication <coughs> in some spots. There's some young, talented guys, but they don't have the experience and they don't have the knowledge of the older guys. But uh, it makes you feel more comfortable with Dom and Quincy there because they've got so much experience. And we're trying to push those younger guys to challenge them. You know, a lot of those guys don't have the knowledge that those guys got. They're not as comfortable. They can't play as fast because they're thinking now. And the last thing we want is guys to get out on the field too slow. Coach, obviously in the fall, a lot more competition. But talk about Kendall and that first group and what you've seen out of him and how he competes. Uh, the O-line you're talking about? Yeah. Kendall. Yeah, you know, Kendall's been a pleasant surprise to me because I didn't really know what to expect. Um, he's playing the, the left tackle spot. He's competing. We, we challenge Kendall every day to play with more toughness. I mean, it's pretty much you're going to hear that theme over and over that every position has got to play with more toughness. Take Crowder, Lorenzo. We want Kendall to play with more toughness and be more physical. So we're doing a lot of drills to try to create that for him. Um, but he's done a good job. Cablano's been very consistent. Um, uh, the other, I mean, Dashawn Sims has been playing over the right guard. He's done a good job. We may have to get him some reps at tackle. You know, Greg's been out at tackle. That's a new experience for him. He's going through some growing pains there. I think the more he does it, the more comfortable he'll, he'll be. He, he doesn't trust things right now. It's like you're on an island. But he has the athleticism to play on that island. He just is it's not natural for him right now to do it as much. You know, then obviously Isaiah's kind of the uh, bricks and mortar. He, 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 he's, he's the most talented guy in there and does a good job. And we don't want to have to move him out. Um, we don't want that to have to be the option. And we're trying to train as many guys as we can at, at tackle. We really struggled today with the snaps, though, and I can't tell you what it was. You know, Lamont moved over there, uh, uh, and he's been playing there with the second group, and we had a lot of bad exchanges with that group. Yeah. What have you seen out of the wide receivers over the last week or so that you liked at this point? You know, <laughs> here we go again. You know, the, 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 in this system, you have to be able to come in, crack, block. They take short splits, so they got to show some more toughness. They got to go in and hit people and block people and do things to, to create that. Um, we got to get some more speed on the edge. Got to blow by people and run by people because all the hard play action stuff we do, where it's a hard play action, there's a split second where you're going to be wide open because everybody sucks up. Those guys have got to get behind the defensive backs to have some explosive plays, is what we're trying to get out of them. So I'm not seeing enough of that at all. We got to improve there a lot. Besides toughness, what are you hoping to see and achieve on uh, Friday's scrimmage? Well, Friday will actually be a um, scrimmage for us. Our first scrimmage will be the, the, the next Saturday. Friday is a coach's clinic, so we're going to have a couple live periods, but it won't be a true scrimmage. But obviously toughness. I want to see some guys tackle in the open field. I want to see some guys get the ball out. I want to see some offensive guys protect the ball. Efficiency is a big thing that we're preaching on offense. You know, every offensive player has a target sheet, and it shows how many times you were targeted. Now, a target does not mean you dropped it. It could have been a bad throw but you were still a target. And we're trying to see who right now is leading that category. When the ball's thrown your way, we get a catch.
You know, and right now the leader is the fullback. <laughs> of course, that's an easier throw. It's a shorter throw, but that's not what you want. You know, you want to be more efficient. And uh, I think Coach Cheney does a really good job of quantifying what's been done. Like, here it is. This is a fact. This is a number. This is what. This is your resume. This is what you've done to this point. And some of those guys get upset. You know, they get mad because they're like, well, I didn't, I didn't drop that ball. It was a bad throw. It doesn't matter. When you were targeted, this is the completion rate. Maybe you're not big enough. Maybe you don't have a big enough catch radius. You know, maybe you drop a ball. But it's just the facts. So we're trying to quantify things for them so we can improve them. Uh, Kirby, I saw a tweet with uh, you and, and Demetrius Robertson. I guess he signed a financial aid. <coughs> how, how do you envision him if he decides to come here? Where, where you line him up? Fast. <laughs> we need speed. <laughs> but uh, you know, he's a really talented player that um, we've obviously recruited really hard. I've had a relationship with the kids since his ninth grade year. Um, recruiting uh, at Alabama, um, and then coming here and continuing to recruit. Coach Schumann's had a good relationship with him, so you know, we think a lot of him talent-wise. You know, he actually at time wanted to be a DB, and sometimes he goes back and forth on that. You know, and, uh, but he is a talented, fast guy. You know, ten five, ten four, hundred meter guy that can really stretch the field, and he's a competitor now. I mean, they, they tossed the ball to him in high school, so I mean, he he could get back there and do a lot of things that. Uh, Coach Cheney used, even when he was at Pitt and when he was at Tennessee, he used guys a lot of ways to get him the ball. So he's a feature player. Coach, just as a follow up to that, uh, as far as Demetrius goes, I know his whole family was here with him and everything. What was, the, I guess, the big message to the entire group as far as your, your pitch, the school's pitch, and bring here to UGA? Well, I feel like we've been pitching it for a long time, man. <laughs> just keep, keep pitching and pitching. But, I mean, we think we got a great product here to sell. You know, we got really great academics and. Uh, you know, he's talked about using engineering as a way to um, go on. I think a big sell for me was to go back and look at the the guys I played with that I played with in the in the mid to late nineties that are didn't make the NFL rosters. You know, that was a big selling point. Bro, I don't want to hear about you know Heinz Ward or or Robert Edwards or you know whoever the pro first round. I mean, they, to tell me how the guys were doing that didn't make it in the NFL. So we did a really intensive study and went through and found guys that were really successful and doing well in, in different fields. And uh, I think you know that was a good sales pitch for him because he gets it now. So good time for one more. You talked about a running back position last week, some guys that may possibly get some work there. I mean, do you know who you might try to move over there and get them some work? Try and we help have you that? We, we, we Early on, we wanted to get uh, possibly security. We, we discussed it with security. We talked about it with a couple other guys. But to be honest with you, um, we had uh, Jason Stanley had a little bit of a hamstring, and uh, and we had another guy the other day in practice, Chigbu, I think it was, banged up his knee. So now we're sitting there going, when we wanted to move a guy over, we couldn't really afford to do it and, and get it there. Uh, one more. Jonathan yeah. led better. Yeah, obviously I wanted to address Jonathan. I was going to open with it probably there, but you know Jonathan made a huge mistake. He embarrassed himself. He embarrassed our team, his family. And our family, and, you know, I'm really disappointed. And Jonathan, he knows that we can't handle that behavior. We can't have that behavior. You're held to a higher standard when you come to the University of Georgia, and he should know that. And uh, he made a uh, he, made, he made a critical mistake. As you guys well know, the student handbook he'll uh, he'll have to adhere to, adhere to a 10% penalty, so he'll get suspended for a game. And you know, I, 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 a, deci a decision does not define you. Is what I told him. So this, this poor decision he made does not define him. But he has got to take some corrective measures. we got to give him some help. And uh, he'll be punished internally as well. And he is very remorseful. And he, you know, he spoke to the team. And uh, we hope that he learns a lesson from this. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach.